question. When you edit a television project, are you confused about the difference between assemble mode editing and insert mode editing? Well, in order to clear some of that up, we're going to talk a little bit about how these two modes work. And more importantly, we're going to talk about when to use assemble mode and when to use the insert mode. Before we go any further, probably we should talk a little bit about how these two modes work. You probably already know that assemble mode is a function in editing that's used to transfer video and audio onto your master tape. And as it does that, it also records a series of control track pulses, which work kind of like the sprocket holes in film do, to make your tape play back at the right speed when you watch your program. The other mode, the insert mode, is a function in editing that allows you to replace portions of the video or the audio in your master tape, but does not record the control track pulses and will not work properly unless there's a continuous series of control track pulses already present on your tape from an earlier recording. Okay, so much for the how of assemble mode and insert mode editing. Let's move on to the when. The fastest and easiest level of editing, and probably the one that everybody does first, is what we'll call all assemble mode editing. Essentially, that means editing that's done throughout your project in the assemble mode. Editing that tacks each shot onto the end of a previous shot to make a program sequence. For example, this very program, the one that we're doing right now, is being assemble mode edited together. So that each of these shots are strung together to make a sequence. What you're watching is all assemble editing. A great deal of editing can be done in this manner to accomplish most of the goals of a project, and certainly most news editing is done like this because of the pressures of time. But occasionally, programs need a little bit more. For example, if two adjacent shots get assembled onto your tape, forming what all the textbooks call a jump cut, some other video, some kind of a cutaway, has to be inserted on top of the jump to visually fix the problem. Now, we're going to play back this jump that we just did and watch it this time. This time, we're going to insert a cutaway of the book here to fix the problem. If two adjacent shots get assembled onto your tape, forming what all the textbooks call a jump cut, some other video, some kind of a cutaway, has to be inserted on top of the jump to visually fix the problem. Using the insert mode to cover video that has already been assemble mode edited together constitutes the second level of editing, what we'll call occasional insert mode editing. That's editing that you don't use very often, just occasionally, to cover portions of your program and editing that you do in the insert mode. Usually, this is the type of editing that gives people the most problem because it requires that you change back and forth from one editing mode to another which is where the problem arises because people will, at some point, forget to reset to the right mode for an edit. And usually that means that people try and insert something into the middle of a program while the machine is still in the assemble mode. And that's a big killer. Watch carefully. We're going to show you what happens to the television picture when you try to come out of an assemble edit. And to do that, to keep our own program honest, we're going to do it on a monitor so we don't get, get a problem on our own tape. Watch. Certainly, you don't want this mess in the middle of your program. Effectively, what happens is the assemble mode, when it stops, leaves a huge hole which destroys your project from that point on. And the net effect is you either spend days redoing all of your work or you consider a career in some other business. So occasional insert editing is a type of editing that, when done, should be done with a great deal of caution. As we speak, we know of several asylums around the world that hold former video people that were caught in the wrong mode at the wrong time. The third type of editing is what we'll call all insert mode editing. This is the process that's used by most advanced career junkies. It's the process that's required by most advanced editing systems. But it's a process that you can do on your simple editing controller. Really, it's quite simple. It just takes a little longer to get started. As simply put as possible, all insert mode editing is editing that allows you to do all of your editing in the insert mode, so that you don't have to change back and forth between assemble and insert. And that should help you avoid making the fatal mistake. All that's required to work this way is that you record onto your master cassette 
on your master recorder some kind of legitimate video. And by that I mean video that's going to make techies happy, not necessarily video that would make the Emmy committee happy. This recording should be continuous and should last the entire length of time that you know your program's going to last, and probably just a little bit more. Even better, if you've got the time, it should last the entire length of your master cassette. This recording, which is usually referred to as the control track run, because it's where your tape gets its control track, should not be done in the insert mode. It should be started either in assemble or with the record and play buttons on the recorder, but never with the machine set to the insert mode. One piece of advice that I think is important is that the video that you use should be immediately recognizable to you as the video that you use for the control track run. Consequently, it probably should not be black. If you use something bright, it can be easily seen and eliminated if it shows up for a couple of frames in between any of your shots. Here at San Jose State, we've connected a black and white test signal to the input of the players in our editing room that can be recorded on the editing recorder as long as the player is either stopped or doesn't have a cassette in it. Using this signal is probably the best way here to record your control track run. Once this track is accomplished, all further editing over it must be done on the same machine that recorded it, and all new recording must be done in the insert mode. It's as simple as that. Don't change recorders after you've started your project, and do make all of your edits in the insert mode. Also remember that in this mode, video and each of the audio tracks, you usually have two, have to be individually armed. So all of the other techniques that we were able to do in the previous two levels that we've covered, you can also do in this manner. You can still tack shots together like we did in all assemble, and you can cover jump cuts just like we did in occasional insert. And in fact, earlier we lied to you when we said we were doing this program in all assemble. This program's been entirely done in the insert mode, and if we've done it properly, you can't tell the difference. Assembling shots together in the assemble mode and assembling shots together in the insert mode on top of a good control track look exactly the same either way you work. So pick the mode of editing carefully. All assemble when it seems to be most appropriate to you, particularly if your project is relatively simple. Occasional insert when you've got to cover just a few problems, but please be careful. And all insert when you really want to do a slick job and you need a lot of flexibility. The more you work, the more you'll understand, the better your shows will look. Have fun.